Kubor Kabati C TV. Lawan Rashapi Daka Frank Motors. I am Tata Punch. Price starting at 5.80 lakhs. Ringkat Bakanet Foodish. Or Dharma Pi, Nin Wan Ramani, Hakir Dob Ying Jong Pi. Mentri Rangba Kajala, Ukonrat Konkal Sangma, Haka Arpunyo Tari Urisau, Arhajar Poar, Ula Play Padba Yakashlem Puli, Jongo College of Teacher Education, Shilong, Bala Bay Pisa, Daka North Eastern Council, Badka Rashtria, Uchatar Shiksha Abhian, Bad Haka Jukapor, Ula Play Ru Yakasurak, Abapinya So, Badka College, Harinkar Kajinga Sakhilang Jongo Simbut, Mentri Rangba Kajala, Uba Apristun Tinsong, U Commissioner and Secretary Jongkatanat Puli Puti, U Dr. B. R. D. Tiwari, Kinohikai Badki Officer Nakatanat Kakot Kakia. U Mintri Rangba Habakren Hakani Gajingalang, U Layatu Baka Kajina Kabalayo Lum Naki Marpo Kando, Kasorka Jala Kalapinankam Hakabashna Kishlem Puli Hakaleng Gajala. U Laong Bakatanat Puli Puti Gade Katanat Kabakong Sanbaha, Ban Nakaliang Jongkasorka Kalapai Kmat Baha Nakabenta Ban Bu Akmat Yakatong, Ban Kinti Yakapuli Kaputi Hakani Gajala. I was just speaking to uh, Madam Principal and uh, trying to understand how this college has been working and the challenges you have faced. And uh, it's very interesting to, to see that we have almost uh, close to 100 students out here with about 8 to 9 fac teaching faculty. But the demand that is there for the courses out here is almost 1,000% more. She was telling me that last year there was uh, an application for almost 1,600 applications to receive for admission to the college. And that speaks volumes of the kind of requirement and the gap that is there in the market, I guess that's the best word I can use, uh, the market. And the fact that there is huge demand for the courses that are being offered here. And in spite of the challenges, uh, you know, every year they're taking in, you're taking in 38 students out here. But it is not enough. And as was mentioned by Madam Principal, that uh, there's a huge need to expand this because this college is doing very well, it's affiliated to Nehu, and uh, every year you're producing, uh, you know, uh, graduates out here who are coming out with BN uh, degrees, which are very important and essential. So therefore, there is definitely a need to, to see some sort of expansion. I'm happy to see that some expansion has taken place with the help of different fundings from the state government, as well as from uh, RUSA and from ABC. But uh, we can clearly see that there is much more of this required. Uh, so definitely, uh, I'm not very clear, of course, as of now, on the needs that are there. I have requested uh, Madam Principal to, to submit uh, a small uh, note, a concept note or a letter or application describing the entire situation that is there and uh, sharing with us what the needs are and uh, definitely you would be very keen to support in every way that is possible. Uh, you are aware that uh, education has been one of the top priorities for us and uh, when I say that I know that a lot of people expect that uh, you know that uh, everything should change in a matter of years or months but uh, the education sector itself is, is one of the biggest challenges, I should say, for the state of Meghalaya. Because the kind of systems that are existing right now, the kind of lack in infrastructure that we have, the kind of lack in training that we have, the kind of uh, different categories of numbers of teachers, we have more than 26 categories of teachers in our state right now, 
and uh, you know we have uh, almost close to more than about 16,000 schools as we speak and colleges right now. Whereas compared to our state of uh, Meghalaya, like a state like Manipur, which is equally uh, in terms of population and area, they have close to about four five thousand schools. So we have almost three times more schools than other states which have a similar population like ours. Uh, you know, have uh, just twenty five percent of the number of schools and, uh, and institutes. So clearly shows the kind of challenges that are there, and these cannot be changed in one day. These require efforts to be made and systematic efforts because there are people who are engaged in this. Livelihood, livelihoods are affected in this. Huge financial implications are there. Set systems which need to be then changed needs to be done. These things cannot be done in one swift blow. It requires us to systematically move and change things. And that's the reason why education is a very, very complicated sector for us in our state. But um, our government's endeavor has been to see how we could improve on that. I would just share it with Madam Principal, and she was, in fact, telling me that she has seen that in the last four, four and a half years, the kind of investments we have made in terms of infrastructure for schools, colleges, and other institutes has been quite large. And funds which have been meant for that purpose have been actually utilized for that purpose. In the past, we used to collect what we call cess from minerals and uh, you know, from other mining department and uh, other minerals, I'm sorry. And uh, this cess was meant to be used for education. But uh, in the previous years, it was never used for education. But when this government came in, we realized the cess had been collected specifically meant for education. And hence, this money must be used only for education. And that's when the 60 crores, 70 crores, 100 crores we collected through cess slowly started being used for education purposes. And I know a lot of people come and tell me when they start seeing big buildings come up for sports or other projects, they say, what about education? And I and I try to explain to people that government works on a budgeting system. It's not that we have certain funds and we can spend everything on only one sector. Budget is there prepared for every activity as we have to balance growth. We have to balance sectors. As much as education is important, farmers are equally important. As much as farmers are important, the youth are also equally important. As much as the youth is important, our women's group, women's groups are also equally important. Apart from the social sectors, health sector is very important. Apart from health, of course, infrastructure requirements. So the so on and so forth. And hence, the government needs to balance some things. And there comes a challenge for us that the financial requirements are huge. And the reason I'm telling you this is to give you an idea of how challenging it is to streamline the education system and bring it to a level which you would like to go to. But it starts with multiple small steps. It starts with buildings like these. It starts with small investments and ensuring that trainings takes place. It starts with policy making. It starts with uh, you know, investment in uh, small schools, healthy schools. Hence, small steps are being made, and I'm sure that if this momentum continues in the days to come, I'm sure that, as was mentioned by our chairperson, that yes, there will come a day and a time when Shalom and Bengal as a whole will once again be looked at as one of the you know, leading regions for our states, or cities, for education. That's, that's really what we are trying to achieve in the long run out here. And that is the way to move forward. And a larger goal, we realize that uh, youth is a major challenge for us. I keep telling a lot of people wherever I go, that if you were to ask me what is the single most important challenge that we see in the next 15 years for our state and for our country, I'll tell you the biggest challenge that I think, from everything else put aside, is going to be our youth. It's going to be unemployment. It's going to be the entire process of ensuring that this huge ball of energy, you can call it, this youth of ours, you know, is directed in the right way. And we're able to really make use of their energy in the right things that we need to do. We're able to create the opportunities for them and uh, we'll be able to plan in the future. Uh, just to give you an idea and hint of what I'm trying to tell you, is that we are a primary in education uh, and agriculture economy. Now, we are investing huge amounts in agriculture, just to share them. Roughly about close to four to 500 crores is being given to agriculture and farmers every year. 
and we intend to do this in the years to come as a government. Because we feel that you know, working capital has to be there for the farmers. Some farmers should be able to increase their overall revenue, should be able to double their income so that they can help their families. Now, we are at this stage of economic development. This will continue for the next five years. But while this happens, the children of these farmers will then start going to college and universities. So they will become slightly more educated and they may not be in the agriculture and farming sector anymore. Hence, they will be in the service sector. And hence the government need to look at the five years and ten years to come and say, well, we develop the service sector. And what is the service sector? Service sectors will be like tourism, will be like IT. And hence jobs will have to be created for them planning in that line. Once they exhaust, in the ten years, fifteen years, they exhaust that particular aspect of economic growth, then comes a point in time that what will we do after that? And that's when we come into the innovation stage. That's when research and innovation will have to be done and Better will have to really focus on becoming an innovation hub. You know, we're looking at countries like Israel. These are the, these are the ways the economies have developed. So we need to realize that human capital investment is key for us as a state and as a country in the coming next 15, 20, 30 years. And th those things cannot happen after 15, 30 years, about 15, 20, 30 years. The investment has to be done today. The small steps have to be made now so that we are putting ourselves in the right track to be able to see that vision and be able to achieve that goal and to be able to assess the challenges that are going to come in those next 30 years and prepare ourselves for those challenges. So friends, we are here as a government. We would like to see that PGD College is growing from year to year. When you grow, I don't talk about the infrastructure alone. What you need to produce a green, braining people. Not only to be fun externally, but I think we need to be defined internally. Because through, through this institution, you will spread out throughout the state. Teaching sector is very, very important sector, I should say, where sometimes myself I forget the voice. We used to forget our teachers. In fact, I am as I am because of them. Sri Pala Sambal Pinichi Pila, he is also the same thing. We are just because he is also because, because of them. But sometimes we forget the teaching community. But I am very happy to tell you, as government, in spite of so many, many challenges, we are trying to meet the aspiration one by one. And in the years to come, our intention is very clear. We wanted to make Meghana the best state in the education sector. Every year, every year there is cess on minerals. Roughly, I'm saying. So, you know, some years it may be 30 crores, 20 crores. Some years it goes to 100 crores. So it goes up in plus and minus, but averaging about 50 to 60 crores is what we get every year from cess that is put on minerals. And that is meant for education. But in the past it was not used for education. Uh, but after our government came in, since it was collected for education purpose, we started using that and it's with that money today that we are constructing new um, LP schools, uh, you know, which we have inaugurated 50 of them and we'll inaugurate another 50 of them by the end of this month. So that's how we are doing and all the infrastructures we're creating, higher secondary schools, it's with that money. You know, of course, it's not possible for us to just simply reduce it because obviously the schools are established. Uh, there are teachers who are working there, so we cannot just simply close them down. So that's not what my point is. But my point is that if you were to compare two states like uh, Manipur and Meghalaya, which are comparable in terms of population, one state has about four, five thousand schools and we have close to 16,000, 15,000 plus schools. Uh, so therefore, I'm just trying to compare and see and show the kind of uh, you know difference that is there in the two states and the challenges that we face because of these multiple 
uh, schools that we have. Uh, in fact, in some schools there are very few students, but a large number of teachers are there. Uh, you know, there are some schools who are in fact not even performing that well and uh, have uh, don't have the kind of pass percentage that is there. So uh, the scale of the problems and the scale of the issues and the number of schools is very very large, and that uh, you know kind of brings out a huge challenge for the state government. Is what I was trying to explain. In my